Welcome everybody. I'm Margaret Carney, director and curator of the International Museum of Dinnerware Design. And I wanna welcome you this evening to our uh, Zoom program, which is part of our Unforgettable Dinnerware series. I wanna thank the Ann Arbor District Library for hosting this event. We're always grateful for their support and their expertise on uh, making our Zooms pretty flawless. <laughs> so you've all been muted. Uh, we can't see your little pictures. And uh, if you have questions during Scott's presentation, you can uh, put your questions in the chat. I think there's a place where it says questions and, uh, and we'll talk about those at the very end of uh, Scott's presentation. So I thank you all for attending. I know if your weather's as nice, it's about 70 degrees here in Ann Arbor today. And uh, so pretty nice. My cat wanted to be outside and <laughs> so did I, but, but I was doing what all this bubble wrap's telling you about packing. So I'm, I'm giving you a plug. We are working on the next uh, newsletter, the membership newsletter, which is only a print thing. It, it isn't an, an online deal. Uh, so you have to have paid your membership and be up to date and you'll get that in the mail, uh, hopefully before the trucks actually pull out of Ann Arbor to take us to Kingston, New York. So uh, we'd appreciate more than ever your membership right now because we have a lot of expenses. Uh, <laughs> think attorneys and um, not realtors quite yet, but uh, landlords and uh, bankers and whatever that we're dealing with these days. So we would love am paying for bubble wrap and wrapping paper and boxes and things like that to get 9,000 objects moved from Ann Arbor to Kingston, New York. So, um, I can't give you a date that we're gonna open, but our lease begins the beginning of May. So, but we will not be open at that moment. Um, but anyway, thank you for your support for uh, what we're doing and moving. And um, what else do I have to say tonight? I don't think I have much else to say tonight. Oh, I wanna tell you about next month because uh, before we get this month, we're gonna talk about next month. So mark on your calendar. Uh, it's always on the second Wednesday at 6.30 Eastern time on April 10th. Judy Schwartz is going to present about Howard Kotler. And if you don't know about Howard Kotler, uh, I think you could, you could Google him, but you could also buy Judy's book, Confrontational Ceramics, and some other publications she's done. She is the world's authority on Howard Kotler. And I don't really want to say anything more than that. He's, uh, his work is amazing. And... Um, um, anyway, so you must tune in on April 10th. So no more about Judy Schwartz and Howard Kotler. But I want to introduce uh, Scott Hamblin, who happily is with us this evening. And um, I could give you lots of information about Scott, but but I'm not going to. Um, basically, uh, he likes to think of himself as an Ohio transplant by way of Louisiana and Texas. He has a cat named Nola, by the way. So I guess that proves that. Um, Anybody who collects mid-century glass, uh, not just carafes that we're gonna look at tonight, coffee carafes and think delightful uh, visuals and everything. Uh, anybody that knows about glass knows Scott Hamblin. So I don't think I have to, uh, to give him more of an introduction, but if you love what he does this evening, which I know I'm going to, um, I want you to uh, contact him or me to encourage him to give a future presentation about vintage bar and barware. Um, so, and maybe dinnerware too, but uh, barware might be, you know, next fall or something, Scott. Okay, so without further ado, I am going to turn this over to Scott Hamblin, who is going to give us a, a retrospective and brief primer on unintentional accumulation of mid-century hostess carafes. So, Take it away, Scott, and thank you very much. Thanks, Margaret. You put me on the spot with the barware, but we'll, <laughs> Sorry. we'll talk anyway. <laughs> I promised. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks, and hey, and thank the museum for hosting. You know, these chats are great. And didn't really see myself here, but I never really thought much about the craft collection anyway. It just kind of happened, thus accidentally, much less than being a topic. But they have become popular in the last few years. So here I am, and why not, you know? But yeah, like you said, most folks know me for the barware and the glassware and way too much dinnerware and whatnot. But all that stuff I added to and with earnest and with purpose, but 
No, the crafts. They just kind of accrued. And um, of course, this was a while back, you know, like mid 90s, 95 ish. And I had gotten into uh, mid century um, sundries and whatnot. And, um, but mostly glass, mostly barware and whatnot. And, um, you know, then one day, um, I was out hunting and it all kind of started, but let me pull up my, let me pull up my PowerPoint here and get it going. Okay. Where's my share to? I'm sorry, bear with me. And here we go. Yeah, so anyway, um, yeah, like I said, one day I was out hunting and found this guy on the left. And it was mint in box, and I had to have it, and it had nothing to do with barware. But there it is. <laughs> it came home with me, needless to say. And um, it's from Inland Glass, um, a little division of Club Aluminum, if you know the, the old aluminum cookware that they used to produce. But they were out of Chicago and whatnot. And I had looked into Inland Glass and... Um, Became enamored with a few lines and whatnot and just started to collect. But uh, obviously there was a number of crafts in these lines. And as I looked into a line or two that I was interested in, the crafts just kind of came with it. But, you know, we'll come back to England in a minute here. But, um, you know, early on, like with the barware, uh, I realized things could get really out of hand really quick when it comes to storage. So I made some limits and restrictions and I pretty much only collect American production and I only collect a mint in the box if, if I can, unless it's super, super rare or whatnot. But most folks who know me know I'm a sucker for a box or a stand or a caddy. So um, it's kind of hard to turn down, but when they just come to you easily, they end up coming home. But that said, decades later, this is where we ended up. <laughs> um, I'll have you know that most of these are too deep. So there's probably two to every slot, but you can just imagine um, what a nightmare it would be if it was all loose and I had to dust it and all that too. But um, that said, more and more, as they came in and as I got to know them. But you know, I must have had about maybe a dozen or so. And like I said, then they just started appearing to me. They just came out of nowhere. They were at state sales and tag sales and thrift stores. And, you know, by the turn of the 2000s here, um, the last wave of mid-century estates that were liquidating, um, there was probably a rush on the market on them, but like I said, they just came out of nowhere. And I could get them for like two dollars a piece, mint in the box, candle had never even been used, you know. But, um, that said, you know, they uh, they started piling up and accumulating, and then, as usual with most collectors, somewhere down the line, I discovered mid century dinnerware, and um. More specifically, the designers and whatnot associated with those lines and patterns. And um, pretty much courtesy of Mike Pratt, I might add, and his, his wonderful books. But that said, I became interested in the, the designers, Fred Press, Ben Seibel, amongst others. And that's when things kind of changed from passive to active collecting. And um, here we are, box after box. But I haven't added to these in years and years and years. They've just been up there. Uh, this is up in my attic. So anyway, that's kind of the background on where it all came from. I'm not quite the nerd as I am with barware when it comes to, you know, uh, micro information and whatnot on these. Most of it's been observation and osmosis. So. Let's let's go ahead and I'll tell you what I know about them.
Um, it pretty much all starts with Pyrex. And, you know, uh, late into the 19th century, right at the end there, uh, that borosilic glass was invented. And um, it met a need. It met a need for glass that could be heated and cooled pretty much instantly without shattering. And, of course, the, the production outlet for that was lab glass. And you can see, um, of course, came in many shapes and forms and flavors, but probably, you know, four or five of these easily um, showed up years later, post-war, when some designers got resourceful and said, hey, we can repurpose some of this. And um, uh, Pyrex did that early into the, well, the late 40s, late, late, late 40s, early 50s. Pretty much all of these were lab glass and they were all from Pyrex. It might be for a third party and whatnot, but uh, a couple examples. Uh, these were early on from uh, an outfit called Handcraft Manufacturing, but you can see the obvious correlation to lab, lab glass and lab product. And um, came in all kinds of sizes, of course. And um, it was easy. You know, the molds were done. New molds are expensive, expensive to design, they're expensive to make, they need to last a long time. And like any man, good manufacturer and business, you know, they're going to get the most, most run out of them that they can. And um, here's a few more. Um, this is from a little company called Aloha. It's the only thing I know of. And you see these little crafts that I used to pretty frequently, but they always got separated from the stand. But again, you can see Pyrex. Pyrex had stamped all of these back then. Occasionally they would add like uh, the actual retailer's name to them or who they were produced for. But for the most part, you really can't tell. And the only reason I know is finding them in the box. But again, um, Aloha, Aloha, L-O-A, I'm sorry, A-L-O-A. And uh, came in a few different colors. Um, again, more examples, more sizes. These were actually from Ernest's Zone, and um, a designer that worked for Rubel and then went out of the zone in about 1950. And these are from his new company, Ernest Zone Creations. But we'll come back to Ernest Zone as well. Um, these are Zone as well. These are big guys. Like um, they generally come in like a 12 cup or an eight cup. And then they go on down to individual little servers, um, hodls that you know fit inside of a coffee cup, so you can carry two cups at one time, or two cups worth of coffee, I should say. But um, let me see here. Yeah, um, used to say these uh, these industrious entrepreneurs and little giftwares companies took advantage of this and um, did what they could with the existing shapes and blanks. Pyrex made a lot of blanks. <clears throat> and this is back to uh, Inman Glass. You should, you should also note that in the early 50s, like most furniture and housewares and accessories, you know, painted black metal was in. It was cheap. It was affordable for young moderns just starting out. And, um, you know, there's whole collectors of that. Jonathan Goldstein has a has a whole web page on Facebook just to mid-century metal. But you can see the accessories definitely trickled down. But Inman Glass um, out of Chicago, again, like I said, they were early into it and uh, continued pulling these uh, these lab blanks. But these are a few of their earlier crafts. Came with a few sizes, the little individual servers as well. The Trevits came with them too. Um, Still variation on a theme, more of that shape. This was their Empress line or their Empress decoration. I think it refers to the shape, but these came in a few flavors as well. Uh, gold, silver, copper, and they came solid banded and striped. And like the guy on the left here, it even came with a, an electric warmer, which is um, pretty cool. I don't know if it's bake light or not, but feels like it, but. Uh, I'm not always sure who made the bits and bobs, the, the handles and the warmers, uh, like barware caddies and, and other metal bits. I'm sure they were outsourced. 
And um, never quite sure who actually manufactured some of these later on, or if they just ordered special order from a glass maker and sent it through an assembler or whatnot. But we'll see as we move on. Um, again, inland, these little carafets, they're like a two cupper. And um, handy enough, I guess, back when serving counted. Yeah, here's the silver versions as well. Uh, oh, this is a waffle set actually. And it comes in gold too. I don't have, I don't think I have a gold example, but this is made to heat your syrup in your butter. And for all those hostesses with the mostess, uh, especially on a buffet, whatnot, uh, sort of made it easy. And um, sooner or later, England needed, I guess, new styles and new designs. And um, the triangle carafe was born. Call them golden triangle, but they came in a few flavors as well. 12 and eight cups like the two guys on the left. The silver one's a little hard to find. You don't see it much. And the one on the right's pretty cool. That's a, they call that one the Renaissance. A little hard to find in good shape because that, that stained glass is fleeting. But long about this time though, Inland also introduced a number of uh, accessory pieces to go with it. It was buffet wear. So there were casseroles and treating well platters. And this was probably the pattern that got me hooked. Uh, they called this one round the clock. And um, only a line or two was really extensively accessorized, uh, this being one of them. But <clears throat> you can see the big party tray on the right, number of trays. I'm not sure who bent their glass. It might have been Glassgill that did it. Glassgill, you might know from George Briard, a lot of his trays. But um, those are hurricanes on the left there. Those are pretty hard to find. Uh, especially in good shape. But those came on a few lines as well. And um, it's one of the few things I have accessories to, so I thought I'd just show them. Uh, this is another new craft shape on the left here. Mm, these are cool, but yeah, these are like 12 cups as well, so they're sizable. And uh, in the even took their torque tray there in the bottom right, drilled a hole, and it's a clock. So battery operated, of course, but... Uh, again, casseroles, whatnot. There's a big double version of this. Uh, well and tree platters, of course. That's a little salesman sample there in the, down in the middle. I um, guess it was like a little advertising piece. And this is another line I collected. They called Collector's Corner. A little bit homier, but kind of cool. But hard beat that one there in the middle with the chevron lid. Um, Yet another new shape, unique to inland glass. Um, there is a shorter squatter teapot that came in this, and all these years later, I have never run into an example. And um, or found one in the box, so even online, so I don't have it, but um, that's probably the one I don't have. Little creamers and sugars came with them. Again, more trays, big party trays. And um, I think Glassbake did these. Pyrex did a lot of the other casseroles, but Glassbake did these for uh, Inland Glass and Collector's Corner. And um, they also, of course, uh, if you have to think back, this was the dawn, the invention of the marvelous new product known as Instant Coffee. Um, we all know how it tasted. <laughs> Not so great, but yeah, Inland did a, a series that could be done just to heat water in and uh, do instant coffee. These are small servers, like four cups. And um, of course, all this stuff could be used range top on a gas stove. If you had uh, an electric, it usually came with a little metal grid, some kind of heat diffuser. But again, Pyrex, we'll move on to them. They were probably the biggest player. Not only did they have blanks, you know, out the wazoo for all the third parties, but they kind of cornered the market. They had dozens of patterns and kept them going for years and years. But um, I'll just take you through some eye candy. 
Again, 12 and eight cuppers and uh, styles and whatnot morphed over the years. But, um, you know, you got to think back that, you know, hostesses, even young ones, you know, still knew the presentation counted. And, you know, company required, you know, some kind of flair, some kind of effort. And, and no hostess back then would bring out a percolator to serve or put a percolator out on the bar for that matter either. But, you know, even the most modest of entertainment and entertainment budgets, coffee fit the bill. Coffee, tea, maybe even a little nosh. But uh, kind of left to right, this is a 12 cup an eight cup, a four cup, and a two cup. And Pyrex did a lot of this, a lot of promos and premiums that went with the smaller ones and um, did a lot of this kind of wildflower powder. A number of the companies did. Another one, same scenario, just another pattern name uh, as well. Don't really have pattern names for a lot of these. They called some of the shapes like the Cinderella line, but don't have a lot of actual names for the decorations. Uh, that's the Cinderella line there on the left. And that came in a 12 and an eight cup as well. And of course, lots of casseroles and whatnot that came out from Pyrex at the same time. Um, another shape from them. They started a line, um, another 12 on the left, eight cup on the right. And um, yeah, and a lot of these, and you'll see they became uh, dual purpose. They were tea makers. You could boil the water for tea, but they also became percolators. And you could perk a coffee, pull the guts out, and serve all in the same, the same vessel. And uh, you'll see tea balls show up from time to time with these. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hope I'm not moving too fast, but we got a lot of slides to get through. Uh, these are basic eight cups, if I remember right, but of course, pine, pine cone, big theme in the 50s and 60s. Um, they got cooler later on, too. This one with the electric warmer that matches. This one's pretty collectible. People are into it. Of course, it always becomes separated. <clears throat> and uh, the warmers themselves are glass. So I imagine a number of them got broken as well. Oh. Uh, and to Pyrex collectors, these are a holy grail right here. This is the Foulard. Um, pattern name does have the name Foulard, which is that little motif, a little star motif. Angela, if you're listening, Angela is the one that turned me on to that term. I had never heard it before. But these came as a service, craft and four cups. And the one, the blue one on the right is really, really desirable. But I was just lucky catch them 20 years ago before they became insanely expensive. Some of the Pyrex, I just in the side, just amazes me what people will pay for. But probably my favorite of the Pyrex, these big um, service, triple services, definitely made for buffets and whatnot, but uh, <clears throat> keep the coffee coming, sugar creamers there, just lay it all out and the hostess can mingle. Another one in the Cinderella line. Great pattern, great pattern. Again, I'm not sure who made all the metal bits and the wood bits, but I'm sure these came from Pyrex and Corning, so I would assume they, they did their own assembly, I would think. And, um, oh yeah, like the guys on the left here, a lot of these were promos and premiums. You got them with, uh, you know, a pound of coffee, um, and whatnot made for tea companies. Um, I put the big guy here on the right. That's a 12 cup. It also came in a cup. This is about where I cut off my grass. This one came in about 1970. And in general, that's kind of where I cut off my mid-century collecting as it is. Um, once you get into the 70s, and especially that, that Mediterranean, <laughs> don't get me started, but... Um, you know, the 70s, in my opinion, were the doldrums of design. But, yeah, again, promos. Here's a four-pack to a realtor, uh, retailer. excuse me. And the little guy on the right, that was done specifically for Lipton. You got that as a promo or, I don't know, maybe it was with box tops or whatnot or came filled with tea bags, but it was definitely done for Lipton. And uh, 
I don't have my little menu here, but let's see what's next. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mainstream. They went mainstream. And, you know, like most collectors, we all get a kick out of seeing them in the reruns. But you can see Laura, she had a couple of them. And they were stovetop, though. I guess they were convenient. Definitely keep things warm with a with a flame uh, from a gas stove. No, Samantha had a couple as well. And um, they popped up from time to time. Dinnerware collectors will know that they, they, she had Taylor Smith Taylor for her, her breakfast service, but I always noticed the carafes that popped up. And last but not least, Aunt B. She, of course, had one or two. You see these just pass by in the, in the Pyrex, in the Pyrex examples. But moving on, um, like I said, most of these, <clears throat> most of these were around and Pyrex was a big player, but there were a few others like Silex that were early to the party. And this is Silex uh, before, before they became Proctor Silex. And they were really known, uh, like a few others, for those big double bubble siphon coffee makers, which, by the way, still make a great cup of coffee. But um, yeah, Silex got into them, made a number of combinations and gift sets. Um, the little warmer you see, that was sold separately. It would come with, and sometimes you could pick it up separately. But uh, yeah, the, the Golden Touch. Came with little individual crafts, but also little individual warmers. They're not they're not real steady, <laughs> little top heavy, but they're fun. And um, of course, Silas did it for a while, and this got introduced later. The Starlight Service, all done in copper. Uh, probably the coolest thing is the one on the right with the electric burner. That burner glows. There's a light in it, and it shows through on those uh, those little star cutouts. So um, these were done in like 12 cups, or eight cups, and then individual serving size, like a four to two. And um, you can see there on the, uh, on the left, yeah, the percolators are starting to make it in. Um, this is one from Silex you don't see too often, but also you can see the example of a little, little metal grid and flame tamer that would come with that if you had to use it on an uh, electric stove. The one on the right, was done for Nescafe. That was a premium promo of theirs. So that one was definitely built uh, for instant coffee. But uh, Silex so did a few. There's another another grid or flame tamer there on the on the left. This one I've never seen before or since I collected it. Uh, I managed to acquire it. Uh, the one on the right is pretty cool. I have to admit. Um, but they get beat up pretty quick. Um, oh yeah, okay. And moving on to Corey. Corey was another another gift wares company, kind of concentrated in you know the hostess wares and whatnot. But they too, like Silex, were early on. They used to make a lot of double bubbles. You can see there in the advertisement. Made a lot of the uh, electric warmers for those. Well, you cook the double bubble right on the warmer. But um, <clears throat> this one here on the left is their Cafe Royale, and it's a swinger. It's a tilter, and those those are just down out fun. First one I came across, I was like, oh, of course, had to have it. But of course, I had found this one in the box, so couldn't resist. But the swingers are are definitely a favorite of mine. And there's another one. That's their Golden Galaxy on the left. And um, I think the one on the right, that's the only one I've ever seen. Um, never saw it again. Again, percol percolator to service at the table. But I think they called this one Empress. It had a name too. It kind of escaped to me now, but Golden Galaxy is great. There's also a longer version of this I don't have that has a cream and sugar built into it as well. And um, and then just utilitarian stovetop perks and, and carafes. And these I just picked up along the way. Um, the, the perk guts, some of them you know, became plastic. Not quite sure how that worked, but I've never actually used these. 
and a fun little set from Corey to close it out. Um, these are little individual, they're kind of like hodls, but they don't set inside of a coffee cup. But yeah, here's the New Orleanian and me. Had to have the Mardi Gras gift pack. <laughs> so moving on. Ah, Galston. Um, another gift worth company. Uh, before they became Galston Sutton Company. You gotta remember too, and you gotta think of trade shows. Back in the day, you know, um, all your department stores, much less all your just uh, mom and pop gift stores, but you know, all your department stores had buyers, you know, clothing, shoes, furniture, accessories, you know, and they'd meet up at these trade shows twice a year for the spring and fall lines. And all of these folks like Galston, they were there, they were represented and they were selling in bulk, um, you know, to your, to your Dillards and your, your Pally Royals and your, you know, um, your, your, your local uh, department stores, most of whom are not, not around anymore and have been absorbed. But that said, Galston did quite a number of them, so we'll go through. Uh, these particular two in gold and silver, Galston also did matching Pyrex casseroles with them. Basically, the same the same kind of decorated stand would fit a fit a Pyrex lidded Pyrex casserole. <clears throat> Still with Galston, they did some great triple servers as too. Um, Angela, uh, the excellent sleuth that she is, uncovered the pattern name for the one on the the one on the right. I think it's Gold Scrolls what she called it, but. Those who know glassware and barware, as well as Ava's Isil, will recognize the sugar and creamer. Those are actually from her prestige line that Federal Glass produced out of Columbus. And those got more. It's a little, little knock to a hot molten rim, and now it's a creamer. So you'll see those pop up from time to time. There they are again. More from Galston. And... Uh, the one on the right, I believe it's called Heraldic. That had a pattern name. And um, you'll notice the handle on a few of these. Those are Silex handles. Silex even stamped some of them. So I assume Galston did the assembly, but just by dumb luck and the stamp on those, you can tell who made the bits and bobs there. But you'll notice, and from here out too, there's a paper sleeve over that collar. That's how they came. Um, brass and chrome. Um, they traveled better. They didn't tarnish. They didn't get scratched. But, you know, me, I'm a purist, especially if it's in the box. If it has original tags and whatnot, and like that original paper wrap, it's not coming off. You just got to know that the brass is under there and hopefully pristine. Um, another one from Galston. This was Glaze Glow. She called this treatment, no, they called this treatment uh, Glaze Glow. Came in uh, turquoise, like you have here, and it came in coral. And these are fun. Again, the, the prestige creamers and sugars. Um, another one from Galston. They always had that tagline it's a dilly. And um, this one came with some buffet accessories as well, but pretty unique caddy as far as these carafes go. And um, not to mention the wood handles. Galson did a lot with wood handles and um, wood lids. Oh, I guess that was it for Galson. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not too privy to what's coming up. Um, this next batch is from Colony. The Colony, if I remember correctly, hopefully somebody correct me if I'm wrong, they were a division of uh, Pittman Dreitzer. And we know them from barware and beverageware too. They did a, a lot of sets for them, but they had this line called Serve Master, Serve Master Creations. And they did these carafes as well as, again, um, there's a few uh, covered casseroles with the stands that match the Serve Master production. And uh, there's a number of them. So we'll just page through them here. Uh, the ubiquitous wheat design. Wheat was everywhere in the 50s and 60s. And um, these are big. These are, uh, I believe these are 12 cups, if I remember right. So they're sizable. 
And again, came in a number of patterns. Requisite Paisley. Um, oh, the guy on the right, I should say. That's that's probably the last craft I picked up maybe 10 years ago. And only because I happened to be on eBay, saw it, and had never seen this one. And um, but Colony Servaster called this particular decoration Apollo. And in the the, the the subsequent years, I've actually run into a casserole they made that has that same same stand look, that brass over copper with Apollo. And uh, anybody collecting these, you'll notice up on the lid, there's that little there's that little diamond piece there. Those were like those were stick on uh, metal foil. And just know, full disclosure, they didn't stick on for long. You find them a lot of times they're gone. They, they'll they curl off, they'll pop off, the glue, the glue will get dry. So don't be disheartened if you see them and see them pop off from time to time. A few more. Uh, one in particular on the right, that brushed one is pretty unique to the line. They could, did call that one Florentine, another popular name back in the day. And these were also from Colony. Um, they had yet another shape and new handle, as well as triple services. The one in the middle was done for Hetty, H-E-D-Y. We do not know who Hetty was or who they were, or if Hetty was a designer, at least to my knowledge, hadn't come up yet, hadn't discovered more about that, but have seen some trades and whatnot, some bent trades out there with this Hetty design. And I've seen it in white and gold, black and gold, turquoise and gold. But this is the only example I have. And again, more from Colony. For some reason, they call the one in the middle Oreo. Looks like dogwood to me. They, they'll find it in Oreo turquoise, Oreo black, Oreo white. And um, again, I think these are, if I remember right, these are 12 cups. Uh, one on the right, uh, pretty unique with the stand there. One on the left is Vintage. That did have a pattern name. You see it come up from time to time. Also had a casserole and whatnot that with it. With, with it. Sometimes you see them with a craft and casserole all in, combined into one stand, but definitely buffetware. Okay, I think this is it. Oh no, a couple more from Colony. Great Greek key. Tur who doesn't love turquoise? Oh, I guess that was it. Um, Wyco, another company I don't know much about out of Chicago. They did a couple. They did a few things. If you Google Wyco or go to eBay, the main thing that comes up are ceramic ashtrays for all the different NFL teams. <laughs> but before then, at some point, they did do some crafts and whatnot. Um, these little servet carrettes, these uh, silver lady was this treatment that that striped silver treatment, and it'll show up here in the next page or two. Came in bigger crabs as well. The guy on the right, um, uh, kind of don't know much about it except that it came in a number of colors. I've seen them in royal blue, yellow, bright red, but um, I guess I've never come across one in a box, so it never came home with me. But yeah, there's the silver ladies on the left uh, in the wood and the black. These are eight cup. These aren't quite as big. But guy on the right, atomic celestial. Let's get our terms right. <laughs> but yeah, another good one from Colony. Um, these, the cream and sugar show up actually with a different maker and a different pattern, but I have seen these. Uh, with sold with Wyco, so I'm not sure how those those wound up together, but I do have a, a three piece set and another version from Wyco. Again, now we're back to the Roly Poly, probably from Federal as well. Although everybody and their dog made a Roly Poly back then, but uh, just two examples of the same in two different two different combinations. <laughs> Promos. I have a number of promos and premiums, and this one was from Wyco, done for the Burns and Allen show. So I don't know. I'm not. I don't know if Gracie ever used them, but 
obviously I had to have this set when I came across it. Been years and years. But yeah, there are a number of primo and uh, uh, premiums and promos out there. And a few slides I have of them. Oh, yeah, speak of the double. Bing Crosby did the one on the left. Um, both of these are from Curtis products. I had no idea about Curtis. Obviously, out in California, out in Los Angeles somewhere. But uh, uh, they did a uh, six and a four, and I think I have a two cup. The guy on the right had a gimmick in that 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 cone that fit in did all the filtering for a pour over, yet it was designed with a clip and you could pour out of it without taking the taking the cone out. I'm not sure how well that worked, but that it, that is the gimmick on the on the box. But that's Curtis. I don't, I'm not sure of anything else they did. Ah, okay. This brings me to Stan Home, Stanley Home Products. Some of you may know, some of you may not. Stanley Home was a business model like Tupperware had a hostess who invited all her girlfriends and whatnot over and then twisted their arms to buy something before they left. And this is one of the, one of the products they offered. I have it and posted it here because it's pretty unique. The, I've never seen the shape ever again or the pattern or the design. And of course the box is pretty great. <laughs> but yeah, Stan Home, Stanley Home Products. Um, there's a few of those pieces in here we'll come to. Um, uh, this is um, handcraft manufacturing. I mentioned them earlier with the black metal stands in the, the early 50s and whatnot. They did a lot of subcontract work for folks, but they also did a number of products that they uh, wholesaled on their own as part of the giftware industries. Uh, the guy on the left is a gay fad pattern. And the one next to it, just to the right of it, that's the pattern I said that normally comes with those cream and sugars. And it does, and it matches. But um, you might even say some of these, like the two guys on the right, they kind of look like Galston, and maybe Handcraft did the, did the work for Galston, but these are Handcraft production. They were sold under their name. Again, um, Silex, those handles, those are Silex handles. So a lot of incest, a lot of mutually um, beneficial relationships, I guess, to the parts suppliers. Uh, one of my favorites, definitely in my top five. I have no idea who made it for sure, but it has to be handcraft in my opinion. <clears throat> Total unique stand. It actually hangs at an angle. As you can see, the stand is built that way to hang it over the flame. Um, black metal and brass. The brass is a bit tarnished, but uh, you get the idea. But uh, I'd love to know who designed this one. Um, this is another little company with two or three or four to offer. CarMax, CarMax Corp. K-A-R-M-A-X. I had no information on this company other than they pop up from time to time. And I do think handcraft manufacturing probably did their work as well. But don't have pattern names, whatnot. I just happen to have a few examples because I found them, tagged them in the box over the years. Uh, two more from CarMax. The guy on the right took me 20 years to identify, but that um, that solid has hemispherical bowl there, pretty unique to this this set. There's a casserole that matches that set as well, but again, Carmax, sorry, Carmax, not the lip balm. And oh, on the right, another favorite of my top five. Um, these are from Rodney Kent. Uh, a lot of folks who've even heard the name or may know Rodney Kent had oodles and oodles and oodles of aluminum ware in the 40s. Most of it has that hammered look with a tulip finial or handle. Um, there's collectors who collect only it. I just happened to pawn Rodney Kent because the guy on the right there 
Um, definitely wasn't going home with that. I do believe Glass Bake made the crafts for this glass. This kind of um, beehive uh, ribbed look, that's definitely a Glass Bake product. But um, Rodney Kent, just a little quick side note, not a designer. Rodney Kent is the name of the company. And I think they were out of, I think they were out of New York, if I remember right, maybe New Jersey. But um, they were located on the, on the corner of Rodney and Kent Avenue. And thus the name for the company. But um, again, most people recognize it for tons of aluminum. Aluminum stuff done in the 40s. Oh, another one off. Um, not sure who did these. Definitely Pyrex blanks, but um, these two were done for Foreman, Foreman Brothers. Some uh, glass collectors and cocktail and barware collectors will know Foreman and Cambridge collectors. Um, Foreman did a lot of metal overlay for Cambridge, and they look quite a bit like the guy on the right. Um, between um, cordial glasses and compotes and whatnot, but um, the guy on the left, this triple service set, it's the only one I've ever seen from them. And I uh, found that rather late in the collecting timeline. But um, I think these are my only two examples. Uh, a little one-off, don't know anything about the Grand Corp, but the Gentlematic, great name, great little, great little six cupper. And uh, again, pretty much done for instant coffee. So. Let me keep it moving here. Uh, Guild, another giftware industry, um, kind of third party decorator and wholesaler. Guild did a, quite a bit of a face service, a number of which had crafts, and these are the crafts you're going to see. Um, little Hollywood Regency there. But this whole series from them, again, you can even see Silex on the white handle. But um, Definitely a unique warmer, matched up with a number of um, oblong and double and single casseroles with lids. Um, I believe the guy on the, uh, they just came, um, came named his colors, white and citron here, I believe. And um, this is gold and avocado. And, oh, I guess that was it. Yeah, that's it for Silex. Um, I'm sorry, that's it for for Guild Guild products. Um, I do have a few other Guild examples, but they did barware services as well, and maybe those will pop up in a barware talk. But that said, moving on, David Douglas. I'll try and get through these. Uh, David Douglas out of Sheboygan, Wisconsin. David Douglas was the owner and the company. He was not a designer. I did have the privilege years and years ago of speaking with two of his daughters, but they were two daughters from a first marriage and were somewhat estranged from him. So they couldn't give me a whole lot of information on him, but he started in Manitowoc and then moved to Sheboygan. And I found him in Manitowoc when I was there working for a year. But um, uh, I remember his daughters told me he was a Wharton school graduate. So he was all businessman, but he did do some cool carafts, but definitely, um, definitely uh, employed the, the whole double duty thing here with percolators, as you'll see. So I'm gonna move on through these. Did an absolute ton of this wildflower motif, but came in several sizes. The little boomerang warmer was sold individually and with the carafts, you could pick them up on the side. Again, you see guts for a percolator and tea balls. The guy on the right was an official official tea teapot or a tea server. Um, again, you could boil your water and make your tea all in the same vessel. But the big wide, um, big wide opening and whatnot, and the whole the whole cut of that one was definitely designed for uh, making tea, iced tea. Oh, sorry, I guess I had doubled up on it, but again, just more more and more of this wildflower. And I do have some accessories I will show you here. Um, yep, right here. Made a ton of accessories for a few of their decorations. Um, you know, sauce warmer 
for your holidays. Casserole, oh, I'm sorry, a canister there in the back, it's not in great shape, but those are salt and pepper shakers in a number of trays, in a number of sizes, of course, in the different crafts. Um, again, more wildflower. The pot on the left is pretty cool. It's it's bigger than you think. And it's um it's pretty cool looking, but yeah, more premiums and promos. Um, of course, that coffee is 60 years old as well. But Jason Sanborn, they obviously did a premium for them. Uh, another line from Douglas. Um, uh, I'm not sure if the pattern has a name, but the shape there on the left, they call this their glamorous line. And it came in a number of decorations as well, a number of sizes, 12 and 8 cups down to the two and four cup servers like you see on the right. Again, um, the one with no guts there, definitely for instant coffee. More of the same. They did trays, salt and pepper shakers. Um, also did a craft in the back. Um, doubled in um, cocktail sets as well. And Back to Stan Home and Stan, my hostess. Uh, David Douglas did this whole turquoise pine motif for them. Came in a number of uh, the same um, accessories with the addition of glassware. Libby did the glassware and came in a couple sizes, like a highball and an old fashioned. But um, uh, definitely more Stan Home. But again, Mark, David Douglas, even. More Douglas. This one was um, uh, unique to them. Uh, they call this Prestige, and it's probably one of my favorite in the line. More so for the color, if anything. <clears throat> but they changed shapes, changed handles. Uh, that's a 12 and a makeup perk on the left. But these little guys on the on the right, they called Range Top, Range Top Makers. And they were done for instant coffee as well. And they came in a number of decorations. But the Prestige line had a few accessories as well. And for the sake of show and tell, I have a few of those as well. Um, the Hurricane's a little hard to find. Um, and I, by all means, don't have everything that came accessory-wise. But um, you can sort of get a sense for scale. The, the big round trays on the, uh, the lower right, those are probably good 14, 16 inches across. And I am missing a little roly poly that went in the middle of that one. It's a chip and dip. But um haven't run into it. I just happened to pick these up on the way. Didn't spend a whole lot of money, but um, appreciated the tie-in. Yeah, more from Dave Douglas here. Yet another pattern, another tea maker. A few more. I love the one on the right. He called that the imposter. So kind of has a, a little swank vibe to it. And more range tops. Um, it's hard to tell, but the guys on the left there, those are black and brown, uh, the, the plastic bits. And then a big 12 cup. It's only 12 cup I've seen in a range top. And it came with a pretty unique stand of its own as well. And the guy on the right, um, that came as a percolator also. I just happened to have this one, but these were pushing into the 70s. And that's about where I cut off. Probably the oddest one I have is the guy on the left. Um, this wasn't an early one, but this was from David Douglas as well. Obviously still using the lab glass and these these tiny thin neck bottles but uniquely and the only one i've ever seen it's a percolator it has a tiny little skinny stem that fits down in there and all that stuff up top is is um for coffee grounds and um percolating in the pot never seen another one don't see how practical it is at all but never tried it out either to see if it actually worked but Pretty unique and had to have that one when I did see it and run across it. So, oh, okay. <clears throat> Let me check my notes here real quick, too. Yeah, you know, somewhere along the line, um, of course, discovering 
uh, the designers and whatnot, I definitely became attracted to them. Uh, I am a fan of Ernest Zone and um, his production, a lot of his buffet wear, a lot of the stuff he's known for is a lot of mixed media and big sizes of things. But these two are from Ernest Zone, Ernest Zone Creations. Um, he left Rubel, a gift worth maker and wholesaler, retailer. Um, he left Rubel in 1950, I believe. And Fred Press came in thereafter and became house designer for Rubel. And um, Ernest Zone went off on his own with Ernest Zone Creations. And of course, designed all kinds of things, but it, you know, there were tweaks. There were, there were stock patterns in glass and ceramic, and you might tweak a stand or, you know, um, uh, a decoration, a gold ap application. And um, that's how most of these designers did them. But um, he also hooked up with Jack Ornstein later on, and they did a whole product line together, too. And some of these carafts were produced under that label. But again, Ernest Zone, more Ernest Zone. Um, you can see the Ornstein uh, hang tag on the, the copper guy on the right. I wish I had a better shot of that, but um, definitely Zone production on the, on the left there. What's kind of deceptive and hopefully showed in the scale with the creamer and sugar, that red guy is a massive. It's like 16 cups. It's huge. And it came with the creamer and sugar. That's a package deal. But these came in a few colors as well. I think I've seen them in black and I've seen them in yellow as well. Ah, my one and only George Briard example, probably because I've never found any in the box. <laughs> so I never brought them home, but Briard definitely did some carafes. They're out there. I just happened to collect this one line of Briard. It's called Linometric. And I do happen to have the carafe, but I know I'm missing a wood stand and warmer, and it had a brass lid like the, uh, just like the sugar, um, the sugar bowl there. But yeah, um, put those in for scale, but most of the line was indeed ceramic, but I believe this is the one Briard carafe I have designer wise. And then um, back to Rubel, and of course, one of my favorites and most people's favorites, Fred Press. The guy was there for quite a while. And there are dozens of these carafes. Um, I, have a, I have a nice little sampling, but um, uh, I should say courtesy of Tom Felt and the, the Glass Museum there in, in West Virginia. Um, he nailed down a bit of the Fred Press, Fred, Fred Press background, and I have seen some literature. And he just had dozens and all kinds of incarnations and um, assemblages with bidet buffets or creamy sugars or hooked to a casserole and whatnot. But definitely, these all came from Rubel, and um, uh, some of my some of my favorites. Um, some of you might even recognize some of the patterns. I believe that's Starfire on the, on the left. Again, pattern names unknown for the longest time until Tim, uh, Tom Felton nailed some down for me. The guy in the, the, guy in the middle, I think it's is Bubbles or Champagne, something like that. But again, variations on a theme. Um, even when they're not marked, you can pretty much tell that they're Rubel because of the the shape and the design of the finials and the handles. And of course, again, you know, we're in the 60s here and we're still using a lab shape. So it, it continued well on into the mid-century. Uh, these are Fred Press as well. Um, cashing in on some of the early ones, he definitely had some black wire stands early on. The guy in the middle, I've only seen a few times. But definitely, it's not signed, but it's definitely press and ruble. It's signed on the box. Um, but uh, more of the same. Ah, and these triple servers, these 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 hosted services from Fred, these were these were great. And a whole new shape for the cream and sugar. I'm not quite sure who made them, but um, there was probably three or four or five 
of these black metal and then at least a dozen done in brass later on, but um, definitely some of my favorites. Here's another version here, slightly different warmer, uh, slightly different collar. Um, that collar is underneath uh, basically like a, a piece of loose side or something frosted, but it's meant to be frosted underneath there. Uh, another triple service. I think this one's called, this was star something as well. Obviously, I'm sorry, I don't remember the pattern. I'm, I'm blanking. Again, he used the, the Federal Prestige uh, cream and sugar shapes there. And um, uh, the guy on the, the guy on the right, he did a line called Classic, which this is from, and there must be, 60 different pieces in this line that he did that has that that same decoration on it. Kind of an Asian one in the middle and a really unique one there on the left. You don't see that bail handle on anything but this Rubel production. Fred did a few swingers as well, a few tilting pots. This is one. Kind of a variation on theme on the craft itself, but the stand is definitely unique. Uh, yet another shape you only see from Rubel pretty much. Uh, this came in the, the two you pictured here, uh, um, uh, white and rust for this dogwood pattern. And it came in solo and um, triple surface versions. The stands, though, are immediately recognizable. Anything with that wound handle, that's Fred Brass. A couple more. This gold one on the left, like the black one, a few slides back, it also has that, uh, it also has that, um, that piece of plastic, that diffuser that makes it frosted in there. Um, call this one uh, gold maple leaf. And it shows up on a number of accessories like bent, bent trays and whatnot as well. Um, uh, one of the one of the easier to find ones, I would say, and probably my pride and joy from Fred Press. Um, this one I found oh just a few years ago actually, but it actually has a you can see there the advertisement that came with it. You see that leaf that fruit bowl quite quite often enough you see the basket up there in the top left but i have never seen the candle uh the hurricanes and i had never seen the craft and i got this one complete in the box so i was a pretty happy camper that day but um let me see what else i got here ah and then ben seibel seibel i'm still not quite sure i think it's seibel but um, this, this will close us out for the evening. Um, if you know Ben, you know, people love him, myself included. Quick little story on this, this guy on the left. This was very early on for me. Had no idea who Ben Seibel was. Had not been introduced to the designers. I don't even think I had limited myself to box only yet. But I found this guy on a, the top shelf of a thrift store for about $3. And I knew somebody, there had to be some design behind it at least, but no, no ifs, ands, or buts, it was coming home with me. I got it early on, so you can imagine my, my delight when I found out who it was and what line it was from. But it's from a line um, Ben did for Gilly, uh, the Taste Tempters, our Tempron. And this has a couple dozen pieces to the line too. It's all buffet wear and service wear. Um, this particular craft came in a solo version as well. I don't think I have it, but uh, I've only got a few examples here. Um, uh, this is a pretty rare one from Ben and a swinger as well. Um, I do have the documentation on this. It's somewhere buried. I'd have to look it out. I didn't have time to find it, but this stands a little beat up, but this one is pretty rare so there wasn't there wasn't any question i had to have it as well and um but again been creative functional aesthetically pleasing
And this is probably, my, I think this is my last one for tonight. Wasn't sure this was Ben, and I guess officially it's still attributed to him, but he did a line called Walnut, Brass, and Crystal, um, of which we only have an ad for. I'm sorry, I don't have it handy. But it only has like a cocktail pitcher and a, and a casserole on stand and this big kind of UFO saucer shapes uh, triple server. But I came into these a number of years ago and once I had them in front of me, um, I later found the actual casserole in the ad and it just come to the conclusion that it's been, it's from that line. They're all built the same. Um, Paul Beaton Bender, the current expert and, and, and guru on, on Ben Seibel, he agrees with me, I think, at this point that they've got to be Ben. But I believe that's it. So I'm going to pull this back off. And I guess we're back live. That was fantastic. <laughs> Oh, my first question is, uh, <laughs> are you going to do a book? No. No. No? Oh, I don't think oh so. I mean, well, that's why we know nothing. Maybe a pamphlet. Well, and you've got it for posterity now. We do. That. It'll be on YouTube tomorrow. <laughs> so, but that was fantastic. I'm, I'm not kidding. I kept, I, I kept seeing something I liked better. And then, oh, my God, look at that one. Oh, they didn't move too fast, but I had a, I had so many to get through. Oh no, that was wonderful. No, I think you should do a book. I th I think uh, we should have an exhibit, a book. Um, uh, that was just great. I I have a question. There aren't too many questions, uh, fortunately, because we're running low on time here. But thank you everyone for being here tonight. Um, besides with me wanting you to write a book and autograph it for me, uh, you mentioned molds early on. Do you collect and have any of the actual molds? Are they metal or what? Oh, or? no. No, and I assume they're probably huge. They're probably industrial, like, you know, maybe a dozen at a time or something like that. I really can't say for sure. I'm just assuming. Or they were they were individual, but probably ganged together in the press. But, um, you know, just like dinnerware and, and all that stuff that was that was molded. Molds were expensive and, and they took time and revision and, you know, you try to get as much bang for the buck out of them. And, and but the actual molds, no. I've seen a few, like most of you guys that collect dinnerware, you know, like Hall, you know, they just had a big, uh, they just had a, I think a big auction, you know, but and of course, dinnerware, a lot of times all that slip casting is a different kind of mold, but anything stamped and, and glassware wise, even for the barware, yeah, that was all mold blown. Oh. So, so the, um, I guess you could say that there certainly were a lot of different designs. Okay. And it seems like uh, the way they were constructed using the glass and decoration and the stands and the handles, putting together different components, it makes it fairly nimble for developing new designs. So I would assume that they probably came out with new designs every year, every season. Yeah, or all you had to do was just get a new decal, which was relatively cheap, especially compared to to um, to the molds. But yeah, the the collars and the handles and the stands they were standard. So yeah, all you had to do is pick a few. A few new decals and decorations, you know, each uh, each trade show. So were there any year. designs that had a very long lifespan? Like they, they made them for the same design year after year? Um, I would say Inland for sure. And um, and probably come to mind Pyrex. Because Pyrex was in, an, in it for a long time. And um, they had so many decorations and lasted for so long in it. And, you know, and it's possible Pyrex made them and fired on the decal the, or the decoration for a number of third-party, you know, retailers. But, so that um, was that was like dinnerware in like with Eva Zeisel's uh, Hallcraft and stuff where they, uh, if people wanted one set, then they'd want the same shape, but with a different decal on it. So the coffee carafes were also the same kind of concept, whereas you already had that one. Here's the new atomic looking amoeba shape or whatever. Exactly, uh, exactly. Yeah. 
you and, know, our, desi- our designers will see them too, you know, the, the stuff that gets signed, designed and signed, yeah, um, they kept those coming right out as well. It, you so know, they- it, was a, it was a popular marketing, you know, lots of, lots of designers <laughs> in the 50s and 60s. So Fred Press put his name on a lot of the uh, ceramic pieces. Are the glass pieces signed the same way with his, his alleged signature? Yeah. Yeah, the crafts and the and the glassware, the beverageware, definitely. Um, there's a few things from from press you'll find that weren't signed, and um, and I can only speculate that it's possible when he went to say handcraft manufacturing to do these for him, they might have had a few stock patterns, and he just went ahead and, and ordered in a few because it rounded out his his spring collection. You know, I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt it, but um. Uh, yeah, he signed, you know, uh, pretty much everything. There are a couple of questions about, you know, specific pieces that you showed. <clears throat> so uh, there was a, what was the brand of the carafe and plates that were white with the trees and blue and green? That white. described it well enough so you... <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to go back and look. Uh, well, maybe they'll have to get back to us about are, that. Are, or was that the, the, the David Douglas stuff, the prestige stuff that had the golden turquoise leaves? That I'm might sorry. be what they were describing. Yeah, it was towards the end. Yeah. Well, I, I think we're going to have to wrap it up. Lots of nice compliments to you, Scott. <laughs> Thank you, folks. Thanks for coming by.